What's up, you guys? My name is Arbersdorf, and welcome back to LEGO Arts. So in the last episode, we did a showcase of LEGO Bendy and the Ink Machine Wave 3, which showcased the Butcher Gang. So now this time, since Spider-Man and for the PS4 has been released, and unfortunately, I can't play it at the moment, but I will. Uh, but I am thinking about, like, getting the game soon, and soon so I can begin Let's Plays. He's on it. But to celebrate in my own way, I decided to finally get around to doing a showcase video on my custom Lego Spider-Man minifigures. Now, before I get comments saying, like, where's the Spider-Man for the PS4? Did you make him? No, I didn't make the minifigure. I was working on these guys, like, uh, back when the game was, like, in first of, and, like, trailers and stuff. I've been working on these things, like, back officially when the Homecoming, like, after Homecoming came out, and I decided, like, ooh, let's do that. That's it. But I wanted to save the homecoming minifigure for a different showcase, and plus, I don't think my channel was officially around at the time. Time. But anyways, anyways, it's three of these minifigures are based off of my favorite Spider-Man video game. Yeah, well, three and a half. half. The other two are based off of my favorite Spider-Man movie trilogy. So we have uh, the homecoming Spider-Man in, in the Stark suit, uh, noir Spider-Man, and... And 2099 Miguel O'Hara Spider-Man, and your man, Black Suit Spider-Man in the style from Spider-Man 3, and, and Spider-Man in the style of Tobey Maguire. So, as you guys know the whole process, we are going to go through these minifigures one at a time, um, explain the whole process to them, why I chose this route, and go from there. Oh, and uh, uh, these are also represents like the webbing. I mean, I chose to just go ahead with the webs as like a sort of background thing to like truly represent of uh, Spider-Man. So anyways, let's get the show on the road! Okay, and to start things off, we have uh, the current Spider-Man, the Tom Holland suits. It's from Spider-Man Homecoming, I mean, minifigure. Also, to represent the amazing Spider-Man from Shattered Dimensions. And since this minifigure was the first of the Spider-Man Spider -Man I created, aided, and sort of like, or like, as I mentioned, if you recall when I did the Avengers video, I said that, like, I was trying for, like, a three-dimensional mask as sort of, like, and to give that magic effect of, like, removal and stuff. Well, when I tested it out in this one, what I failed to account for would be, like, the face decal. Like, how that would be all in the head. So, this got stuck. And it was a shame, too, because I did, like, I even, like, measured it out and everything. Thing, like, waited for this, waited for the head to dry separately. Then, um, when I put it on, as you can see, like, there's a small crack in the back of the head. Uh, to really show... Oh... That once I put it on, it became stuck on. And as you can tell, the face is not that pretty. That pretty. Because again, this was like... I made this back when I was first like experimenting with faces. So, uh, it's sort of uh, a little bit wonky. A little wonky, but I guess it's okay. And, uh, as you can see, like on his arms and on his boots, he's got like the webbing detailing. And, um, and not really a lot on the legs. These were mainly repainted. Uh, the symbol... I solely went, actually, a little bit of a story, I actually went to Target, Target one day, solely to buy a Spider-Man Homecoming set, thing set, so I could, like, get the minifigure and, like, uh, repaint it and stuff. I actually think, mm, actually, two different things about the torso. So, it originally had, like, the cowls on the front and back, but they fell off, and then after taking, like, a close look at the original bar, original, like, printing and stuff, I, de I decided, mm, let's just go with it. Let's just go ahead with it. And, uh, before we continue on, let's do, a little, like, a little compare and contrast. So, like, the Iron Spider-Man. Iron Man, okay, if I can grab it, certainly the legs. Yeah, I'll just hold on the pincers. Um, a little bit of, little similarities, but at the same time, a little bit of a difference. I don't know if uh, they reuse the legs, the legs, and just, like, reuse the cow, use the original printing, but modified it a little bit. That's probably not. Uh, which is a good thing, but in general, I don't know, obvious difference between the two, the two, but it was pretty cool to see, you know, like in the movie of the actual Iron Spider suits, uh, and it's covering on the original, you know, sort of like, like an evolving kind of thing. But anyways, let's move on to our next minifigure. Next up on our list is the Spider-Man Noir minifigure. Figure. This one was the second of the Brethren to be created, I did, and and after like the failure of with the original mask. I just, decided, I just decided, you know what, let's just keep it up with the, the original animal model. Because that way it wouldn't look kind of weird of having, like, their, like, three of the guys to have, like, regular heads and then for another to have a completely different head. And so I just decided to just keep it up and just keep it up with the same one. 
You know, it's sort of like the same sort of style. But anyways, with this minifigure, figure, as you can see, this one actually has decals. Decals, and side note, I know the decals that I use in the video, video, they aren't mine. I will include them in the link description below. I'll go give the original artist's credit. And it's uh, on the back, as you can see, like, he's got, like, the spider symbol emblem on the signs. Uh, these were mainly just uh, painted on regular gray, and then I did, like, a sharpie for the lines. Uh, same thing with the feet, only I use paint, and also, oh, painted on the black boots. It's, the face was a little bit tricky, because I had to look at different photos to, like, make sure that I was getting the mask correct. That's, and once that was done, it was just like, okay, perfect. And I actually like this suit. I really like this suit, because it's, it's not like a normal Spider-Man suit. Like, when you look at Spider-Man, when you think of Spider-Man, you think of, like, oh, the classic, like, red and blue kind of suit. But this one, it's definitely a different design. Like, there's not really a webbing kind of pattern. And then the design, the Spider logo isn't on the front, it's on the back. Uh, the suit, it's, of course, it is homemade. Homemade. Actually, side facts. Uh, uh, and the comic books of this game, uh, not game, of uh, the character, it was actually revealed that this was based off of Uncle Ben's World War One, World War One outfit. So I think that's kind of a cool detailing, detailing to sort of like, like reuse like some old, old like nineteen uh, thirties clothing. Because keep in mind, this takes place at least in like the nineteen thirties during like the Great Depression era, which I think is pretty cool. Well, in all honesty, uh, so in general, like when first seeing this in Spider Man. And Shadow Dimension, it's just like, this is an awesome, some Spider-Man suits. And I really decided to go ahead with it. But I did see, like, some other incarnations of this suit, such as, like, he would wear, like, a big trench coat, so he'd carry a pistol. He'd wear, like, a fedora, uh, like, a fedora. Um, the trench coat I could deal with. Like, I could kind of deal with the trench coat, but I honestly prefer it without it. It makes him look more, makes him look more stealth-like. Like, you know, not having to deal with something... And he could get caught on. But the fedora, I thought it looked weird and ridiculous. So, oh, I didn't include that onto the minifigure. Minifigure. And in general, this came out pretty good. This came out pretty good. And good. And I'm pretty satisfied with this minifigure. And I hope you guys are too. Now then, let's move on to something a bit more futuristic. Next up on our list is Miguel O'Hara. The Spider-Man from 2099. I mean, now, I actually heard about the Spider-Man like before Shadow Dimensions. But it was more of like, I was a little kid back then, and I didn't fully understood it at the time. But now that I'm older, older, and a bit more Spider-Man knowledge, I then understood, like, oh, he's from the future. Future. So this one, and out of all the suits, this one, surprisingly, was the easiest to do. You know, like, aside from the decal, like, the front and the back. And this was easy to do, and to do. And with the face, it was one of those moments that once I got the face right, it was just like, I can't touch it anymore. I can't. I can't. And, but in general, all I really had to do was just, like, take some, take, like, some navy blue, uh, then paint, uh, then paint it on, like, the front and back, all on the legs and on the arms. And actually, with the arms, this was definitely a unique thing I wanted to do. I think this was the first time I tried, like, like, molding clay on, uh, on a minifigure's arms. Like, I think this was the first time I actually ever, like, tried to do, and to do, like, the side gauntlets, because, like, I c my memory, like, isn't super good, very good sometimes, so I had to, like, double-check, like, ooh, uh, what were the designs for, like, like, Miguel's suit? And then once I remembered, like, oh yeah, that's right, he's got, like, the wrist gauntlets on, it's on the side. I, I definitely wanted to make those three-dimensional, interdimensional, to sort of, like, that 3D element. So, this really tested out, and so this minifigure, like, really tested out, and that's my capabilities as a customizer to do... You know, like three dimensional parts on not just the rest of the body but on the arms as well as well so this was a little bit oh it was a little tricky at the time but once i got it done and done it was pretty good and good and in general not really a lot to go on to the minifigure and here this came out pretty good and good and i'm pretty satisfied for what the future has in store now then let's move on to our next minifigure next up on our list it was is the hardest and pretty and probably my favorite minifigure to have made in this showcase, and that's that's the black suit Spider-Man. And now this one, this one, I was jumping a little bit back and forth of how to do this one. This one, I ha I wanted to either a go ahead with like the classic like black suit, like just have like the big uh, have like the big symbol on, on, 
But uh, part of me wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to, like, really challenge myself. Challenge myself back when making this figure. So I decided, like, ooh, let's go ahead with Spider-Man 3. Now, I will point out that, yeah, the movie wasn't pretty good. But uh, back when I first watched it, I loved the black suit. Like, I think it's my favorite, favorite like, black suit design I mean, out of all the black suits. Black suits. And plus, it was really unique because it actually shows, like, even though it's completely black, it still shows the pattern. Like, you can faintly see on, like, the front of Cal, it still got the sim- It still has the symbol and the web printing thing, uh, same thing on the back. Like, so, this minifigure, like, really tested out, like, my capabilities of the webbing. And, cause, when I did the Homecoming Spider-Man, Spider-Man, I did a little black paint webbing, but most of it was Sharpie. This one, since I didn't really have a silver Sharpie, I used silver paint. Paint. Which really tested out. I don't know, because it was one of those scenarios like, ooh, I can't mess this up, I can't mess this up. And like with the 2099 minifigure, you know, once I completed the head, it was one of the scenarios like, I can never touch it, I can't touch it, I can't ruin this. This. And plus, with the amount of webbing that had to be done, you, know, you can't imagine, like, like, if... Like, if there are customizers out there who understand, and uh, who, like, have understand and of going through that sort of thing for, like, you want to reach a specific thing, and once you do it, you can't, and you don't want to touch it anymore, you're, and you guys are probably thinking, like, oh, I've been there, bro. Uh, so this minifigure definitely was a little bit on nerves, nerves of how to approach this one. This one, I will admit, Spider-Man 3 probably wasn't the best, wasn't the best out of all the Spider-Man trilogy movies. Uh, actually, out of all the Spider-Man movies, probably it's not, uh, but the suit itself, I love the suits, it's pretty cool, and cool, and in Shattered Dimensions, the, and there was the black suit Spider-Man, Spider-Man, so I wanted to make this as, like, my stand-in for black suit, black suit Spider-Man, uh, which I think is pretty amazing. So, uh, speaking of amazing, let's move on to our final minifigure. And last up on our list is the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man suit. Now, I admit, this one actually wasn't made until the other four were done. And this one was actually, like, you know, like, uh, when, uh, like, when a friend of mine, and of mine, gave me, like, a box of Legos that her son, didn't, like, didn't play anymore, anymore, when searching through the box, I sent, I found, like, a minifigure of, of, like, an old Spider-Man minifigure, figure, minus the head. I searched in that box, like, everywhere, and I could not find the headpiece. Yes, I'm pretty sure the head is long gone, um, but it always bugged me. Like, mm, I want to, I want to fix this. I like, I want an actual, well, Spider-Man minifigure, and plus it's from my favorite movies, movies. So, why don't, why don't I bring it back? So I decided to, so I decided to go back to the same method that I was working on for the other minifigures, and work, and sort of like repurpose this minifigure. And this one was a little easy to do, but at the same time. Kind of hard. Kind of hard. Um, most of the colors were already there. Like, the only, like, real painting I had to do was, like, on the feet for the boots. Uh, a little bit on the arms. Like, uh, like, the arms were just completely blue, minus the red hands. And, but, uh, like with, uh, like with the symbiote suit, it's, I had to, had to do a little recoloring. And, uh, like, I added on, uh, like with Homecoming, I added on the red. And, and then I added in the silver over detailing. And in the face, it came out way better. Way better than Homecoming's face. Which was surprising, considering since I was working with acrylic paint. It's before, like, instead of a Sharpie. Sharpie. And, uh, actually, let's do a little, like, a little comparison. So, come here, symbiote. Use the fourth. Alright, so there's a little similarities between the two. In the two. And that's, like, the thing that I like about the suit. Like, in the movie, I like it how they kept up with the same design pattern, but only changed a little, only had a little differences. Like, they just used a different spider logo, but they still kept up with the same pattern, the same design. And that's what I love about, like, the two suits. Two suits. Uh, and the two are really, really amazing. I don't know if we can play as this Spider-Man in the new Spider-Man video game, but if we can, I think this would be, like, the suit that I would wear. Because as the suit, it was ve it's very cool. Mm, cool, it's really amazing, and I'm really glad that I got to do this one rather than like the Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man kind of minifigures. Cause don't get me wrong, the movies were, yep, yeah, uh, decent. I'll just do it decent, but like the suits, they can't really do justice to me to like the originals, 
engines, and I think this one was definitely very interesting to make. Like, I def- I don't really remember, like, uh, what kind of- uh, if I had to use multiple layers of reds to sort of, like, match up uh, with the rest of the suit- the suits, because I didn't want to damage any of the torso detailing- detailing. It was already as perfect as it was, I didn't want to accidentally mess any- mess anything up. So, I don't remember if I had to use multiple layers of red or just a specific- a specific red. But, uh, once I was done, and the final product came out very, very good. And that does it for this episode of LEGO Arts. Again, this was my small way to celebrate uh, the release of the new Spider-Man video game. I will get around to playing that game in that game eventually. I just need to find, like, the right time right time to, to like, buy the game in a game. I'm drawn between that and pre-ordering Kingdom Hearts 3. I think I'll do that around, like, the same time. That way I'll save a little bit e and time easier. And, uh, before I wrap this video up, uh, in the previous episode, episode, sure enough, like, a couple of hours after uploading it, uh, someone commented, hashtag Lego Bendy, Bendy. So, I'll give you guys a little preview of what Wave 4 is gonna be. Maybe. So, here's what we got. I'll leave it up to your imagination as to, as to who it is, who or what it is, and as to what's gonna be next. Uh, next episode is gonna be something a little bit different. Reference. Well, not really. Uh, it'll still be the same method, but I'll leave it. I'll leave a teaser in, in at the end below, at the end of the episode below, uh, and a comment below of like what you think it is, think it is, and we'll see if you're right. For now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that like button. Comment below what you think. Share this to your friends. Subscribe to me on YouTube. Follow me on Twitch. And here's a half of the road. Ow! Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time. What are you, Ice Moonrises? Next time on Lego Arts. A couple of tennis. It's me, Connor.